Well, it started when I was just a kid. Family expected me to eventually phase out of it. Perhaps some things never change. It's this borderline obsession that's brought me to a widowed cabin in the woods. Got my kitchen. It's everything I need. And this is why it smells so bad in here. Whoa. For the next three months, this will be my home. Francis Marion National Forest will be my playground. So let's get to it. Snakes have always been my thing, and now I'm really chasing the dream. I've come here to do research with pit vipers, among other things. There's been an ongoing project, funded by several public agencies and nonprofits, to investigate the spatial ecology of Francis Marion diamondbacks. Furthermore, I'll be collecting venom samples from pit vipers as part of a venomics project I'm working on with my professor, Dr. Charles Smith. Let me introduce you to Francis Marion. The National Forest covers an area of 259,000 acres in the coastal plain of South Carolina. It's composed of a great diversity of habitats, from longleaf pine savannas to coastal maritime forest. However, a great deal of the forest is swamp. In fact, Francis Marion was named after a Revolutionary War hero, also known as the Swamp Fox who used the vast wetlands within the forest as his medium for guerrilla warfare. The National Forest is also home to an abundance of species of conservation concern. The presence of species such as the red caucated woodpecker and American alligator provide a need for serious conservation efforts. But now that we've got that covered, you're probably wondering exactly what it is we do. All right, running back to the car, gotta get my hook. We got a diamond bag. First, will you introduce yourself? My name is Mike Martin. I'm a field project manager out here for this threatened and endangered species, perp species project on Francis Mary. And uh, male courting one of the females we're tracking, Shirley. Ran around the opposite side and came over. This whole project started uh, a few years ago with uh, mostly, I believe, Jeff Holmes and Wade Kalinowski reaching out to biologists on Francis Marion uh, to look into their diamondback population. Uh, Do everything you can while staying, staying safe. Yeah. Gently pulling back vegetation. Here's my view. Definitely one head right there. Another head right there. Definitely two heads. Hello. There's been this ongoing battle for federal protection of the Eastern Diamondback. These could, these could be fairly large. It's really hard to tell right now. See his rattle. I'm hoping there's not a third snake here. Do you, can you? Get low and see, if you can see what you can see down there. I thought I saw something at first a little bit further back. All right, I'm ready. It's hot. We, we spent an entire month and a half this year before we got our first diamond back, but things kind of fell in line after that. We found a few more trying to find out about the habitat use. Uh, by and large of these diamondbacks, as well as get a, a better feel for the population status. This way? Too big. Yeah, I don't know where. Get back. Got him. Get ready to. Hold on, I'm not ready. I'm good, I'm good. Dang, he is big. All right. Hold on, hold on. 
Where? Whoa, on, yeah, get his head in there. Where? Okay. Where? In the bag! Woo! Oh, in the bag! Finding a snake and capturing it is the hard part, but it's just the beginning. Back at my place, we processed the snake, getting a mass and measurement, as well as a blood sample and venom sample. Mike and I both agreed the name Chief would be most fitting for this monster. The next day, we took Chief up to Dr. Jackie Burns' veterinarian clinic. First, we anesthetize Chief for surgery. Well, I kind of got there. There's one right there. Yeah. Once down, Dr. Burns implanted Chief with a radio tracker. Two arms. Uh, two arms. Right. The heart, heart rate and everything going on. Uh, right it's, it's weakened, but it's still going regularly. Okay. He's on two. He's on two, so. Just as soon as I feel him pull, I'll let you know. One, if he three, does. four. And there should be a couple more. Than that. Two, one. A pit tag for further identification and an eye button for thermal tracking were then added to the body cavity. Finally, Dr. Burns stitched the snake up, gave him an antibiotic shot, cleaned him off, and then we tried to bring him back as quickly as possible. After a day or two of recovery time, we released Chief back where we found him. We then tracked Chief, like the other snakes, a couple times each week. However, Chief proved more difficult to track than expected. What, uh, what's the situation with Chief? Chief is MIA, and uh, we're going to go find him. Well, we caught Chief in breeding season, uh, just as it was beginning. We're trying very hard to locate them again, but the transmitters only transmit a signal a certain distance, so our equipment can only pick up a signal from a certain distance, yet the size of these compartments are so large that it's very difficult to tell exactly where he might be. We're trying our best in hopes that we can pick up a signal. So. Yeah. Although tracking is a principal component of our work, we also do a lot more than just that. Here's what a typical day looks like. Mike and I meet up at the ranger station in the morning. We check the traps and four fences located in different parts of the forest. In the afternoons, we often survey new habitat, hunt for species of interest, and gather venom samples. Many nights we road cruise as well, hoping to encounter active reptiles and amphibians on the move. We've been looking for cane breaks today, so it's actually pretty nice. Uh, you got a bag? This is the real reason we come out here. Oh, yeah. Now you've got a better idea of what we do on an average day. But let's check out the venom work. The first step is catching the snakes. Then I take the animals back to my place for processing. Alright, next thing, once you got the snake tubed, get a venom sample. Oh, big mean scary snake. Alright, and then next thing, we gotta check the sex of the snake. Definitely a male. Now I'm doing a scale clipping uh, for future identification. One, two, three, four, five, six. This guy's a mess. Next thing is blood. All right, I feel the heart right under this finger here. Look for it. That should be enough. Then I get a mass on the snake. 33. Next thing we gotta do is get a measurement. Add identification number. 
Finally, I upload my pictures, hop on image J, and get the actual measurements. And then do it all over again. Ready? One, two. I came here with a million questions running through my head, hungry to find all the answers. Some I found, many more have escaped me. But what I have learned is to live for the questions, not the answers. Do snakes have personalities? Most people's interactions with wildlife are like you're basically getting a snapshot. Telemetry takes all those snapshots and puts them together so you get to actually see more of that animal's life. You know, that animal does develop an identity. We still don't know where Chief is, and we may never know. And as for these, we'll send them off to the lab for processing and someday discover what secrets they may hold. This summer has had its ups and downs. I've experienced the beauty of life apart from human influence, but I've also seen the growing disconnect between society and the outdoors. And you have problems with uh, a lot of the people around here just like to kill snakes. Many have lost sight of the value these creatures hold. But to get more than a snapshot, you'll see that they're not so different from us. They are curious. And sometimes they don't like having their picture taken. They have good days and bad days. When no one's watching, they like to dance. these belongings and my data. But more importantly, I depart with a greater appreciation for life and a feeling of purpose. And if there's one thing I've learned, we have no right to this, only the privilege.
So you ready for the big secret about life? Well, I'm still figuring that one out. Hey there, uh, can you tell me about the roof rack? Is that DIY? Interested in conservation? Check out how to contribute at amphibianandreptileconservancy.org.